Not being self-indulgent means not inflicting yourself on others. Being honest, not appropriating, equanimity with regards to sex and freedom from the urge to acquire. This is the chief intention at all levels of insight, regardless of status, place, time and circumstance. So Sutra 30 and 31 are about the first of the eight limbs of yoga, yama. And this limb along with the second one is generally regarded as being to do with ethical behaviour. They are the rules of restraint or moral conduct. Now, nobody's going to argue with that. We should all try and behave ourselves, shouldn't we? But in the context of the Yoga Sutras, how does behaving yourself according to certain rules of moral conduct lead to establishment in samadhi. Being good will not get you there. There's a very fine line between the saint and the sinner. The sinner usually regards themselves as a saint. Most bad people actually don't believe they're bad people. On the other hand, most saintly people are very well aware of the capacity for evil that they harbour. That's their struggle. That's what makes them saintly. It's not that they don't have a dark side. It's simply that they haven't given in to it. So again, we must get over this naive understanding that yoga is about purification. You cannot purify the mind. The mind is as it is. But what's possible is becoming established in awareness with relation to the mind, not allowing that awareness to be hooked in to the mind. This is what's called dispassion. So how does following moral precepts do that? Well, it doesn't. We have to look a little deeper. We have to find the underlying spiritual principle of not indulging yourself, not indulging your moods. A while back when I was talking about Sutra 14, I talked about graciousness of behaviour and how the consequences of our behaviour are dependent on our graciousness. I didn't really go into what I meant by graciousness then, but this is it. So spiritually, what are we trying to do here? We're dealing with ignorance. And going back to Sutra 3 in video 30, in dealing with ignorance, we have to deal with this sense of separate selfhood, which is reinforced by attachments and aversions. So what we're doing here is dealing with our attachments and aversions because these reinforce the sense of separate selfhood which is the essence of ignorance. So by not being self-indulgent we're not giving in to our attachments and aversions which we can understand as our comfort zone, our comfort zone. So not being self-indulgent is the first of the eight limbs of yoga. And sutras 35 to 39 go into detail about this. And we'll go into that detail in the next video.